HPV infection and cancer of the oral pharynx. This is one of a series of cancer videos that can be found on the website about cancer.com. This is discussing the recent epidemic of cancer in the back of the throat or oral pharynx due to infections with HPV virus. HPV is human papillomavirus. This is a common virus. Nearly 80 million people or about one in four Americans are currently infected with the virus. And virtually 80 to 100% adults have been exposed to this virus. Most HPV infections do not cause cancer, but certain types are oncogenic, meaning they can cause cancer. There's been a dramatic rise in HPV as a cause of cancer. The study from Europe showed dramatically in the last 20 to 30 years how HPV overwhelmingly causes tonsil cancer rather than smoking. Similar studies from the United States have also shown a dramatic rise in HPV as a cause of oral pharynx cancer over the last 20 or 30 years. It's been known for a long time that HPV virus caused cervix cancer. Virtually 100% is noted. But now it's noted that at least 70% or more of oral pharynx cancer is caused by this virus. Cervix, again, was the most common cancer, 11,000 cases a year, but now HPV oral pharynx cancer is more common, is noted here, 16,000 cases per year. The good news is there is a vaccine that will prevent HPV, Gardasil vaccine. This has been around 10 years now. The CDC immunization guidelines, if you pulled up their website, show that all children, boys and girls, starting at the age of 11 to 12, should get the HPV vaccine. And the guidelines are as noted here. The types of HPV that cause cancer are only certain types, so-called high risk. In cervix cancer, 16 and 18. In oral pharynx, it's HPV type 16 is the culprit. The prevalence of HPV virus in the population is noted here. About 7% of people will have HPV virus infections in their mouth at any given time, and it's three times more likely to be found in men than in women. 65% in this study of HPV, of oropharynx patients, of oropharynx cancer patients had the HPV virus, 65%, but their partners, only 4% were infected. So this is probably not a a virus that spreads back and forth between the patient and their spouse. If a person has an HPV-related oral pharynx cancer, it's probably related to an HPV infection they had years ago. And again, we're talking oral pharynx, not oral cavity or larynx. And basically, we're talking tonsil and base of tongue cancer. And here's a picture of a typical tonsil cancer that you would see. The cause of how does HPV cause cancer? Well, HPV is a fairly small DNA virus, only 7,900 base pairs, but it's able to make a number of genes out of these base pairs. Oncogenes are genes that cause cancer, and the viral oncogene E6 and E7 are the ones that create all the problems. E6 will interfere with P53, which is a normal protective protein that regulates cell division in the body. An E7 oncogene will interfere with the RB protein. So this is how the viruses interfere with normal DNA repair and cause cancer. Also, if the RB protein is knocked out, the person will overexpress the P16 protein. And this is useful because P16 can be used to as a surrogate marker to find out if the patient's infected with HPV. And so a patient will often have on their biopsy either a P16 or an HPV test to determine if, they, uh, if their cancer is related to HPV. And there is some confusion here. 10% of those with positive P16 will actually be negative on the HPV test, and 7% of those negative for P16 will be positive for HPV. So simply say either of these tests will prove that the cancer is related to the virus. And so what goes wrong? This is a typical uh, picture of cervix cancer. You start with normal epithelium that gets infected. If the virus persists, 
eventually you have a chronic viral infection. If the viral infection continues, you may get progression of the dysplasia or abnormal cells, and you would have what would be called carcinoma in situ. And if this persists again, it can actually turn into invasive squamous cancer. There is a latency time from infection to developing cancer. In cervix cancer, this may be 20 or 30 years. And in head and neck cancer, is probably the same. The common age for HPV infection is 25 to 30 and another peak at 50 to 55. And yet oral pharynx cancer is noted doesn't show up until 40s and 50s or 60s. So there's about a 20 to 30 year lag period or latency from the infection till the cancer. And again, the data shows in 2016, uh, men are uh, three or four times as likely to have pharynx cancer as women. And so the studies show uh, it also occurs in a younger age, 10 years younger in one study, median age 57, and overwhelmingly male, 76%. And if you look at the CDC recent data here, the odds of a white male developing this cancer is about three or four times higher than a female. And white men have a higher rate than African-American men or Asians, as noted. The average age for cervix cancer in a woman is 49, but the average age for oral pharynx cancer related to HPV is 62 years old. In a man, the average age is 59, uh, but as noted, that's the median age, and patients can start developing this cancer as early as in their 30s and 40s, as noted, and also as late as their 70s or 80s. The other odd thing about HPV-related oral pharynx cancer is the primary, the area in the mouth, can be quite small. The stage here is called the T stage. So... 64% of the patients, or the majority, will have a small T stage compared to smokers. On the other hand, the lymph nodes will be much larger in the HPV patients. 69% will be N2 or N3, which means the lymph nodes in the neck are either large or multiple. So there's a real difference there. Here's a picture of a typical smoker who has a large tonsil cancer and they'll complain of a lot of pain in their throat, often radiating into their ear. And yet here's a picture of a typical HPV cancer in the tonsil, very small to see, and the patient may have no symptoms in their mouth or throat. So typically, if you compare the symptoms, the HPV cancer patient will present with a big neck mass 51% of the time, but rarely a sore throat or trouble swallowing whereas the smoker with throat cancer will almost always present with a sore throat or trouble swallowing, and only 18% of the time a lump in the neck. So here's your typical HPV patient, 50-year-old, relatively young, white male with a lump in his neck on the left, and you can see his PET scan picture on the right shows nicely the tumor. Here's a typical CT of a cystic lymph node in the neck, and the PET scan from the same patient, large lymph node in the neck, very small primary or source in the tonsil. Another picture, a relatively young man, large lobulated neck mass. This is his CAT scan. This is the ultrasound we used at the time of his biopsy and the PATH report that showed squamous cancer, HPV type 16. And this is his PET scan again showing the large mass in the neck pushing out on the neck muscle and multiple lymph nodes in the neck. Here's another patient with stage 4A HPV cancer. You can see the tumor in the back of the tongue or base of tongue, but a very large cystic, or we would call it a necrotic lymph node in the neck. Another patient, large cystic lymph node in the neck. Another patient, a large cystic lymph node in the neck. Here's his HPV test, HPV positive for 16 and 18, which are the high risk types. Here's another PET scan, similar patient, big lymph node, small tumor, another large cystic node, small tumor in the tonsil, another relatively young white male, lump in the neck. Here's his PET scan, very small tumor in the tonsil, very big lymph node in the neck, uh, lights up nicely on a PET scan. The good news about HPV cancer is they have a much better cure rate. This was a study from the CDC's website from Europe and you can see the survival with HPV-positive tonsil cancer 
is twice as high as HPV negative. This was a study from Johns Hopkins in the late 90s, early 80s. 90% of the patients with oral pharynx cancer were related to HPV, and the five-year survival rate was very good, 89%. And they went back and looked at some of the studies on oral pharynx cancer and uh, went back and found out which were HPV positive or negative. And as you can see in this collection of five studies, the cure rates were much better in the HPV, HPV patients. And local control also is much higher, overall survival higher. Even up to 10 years, the results are better if you are HPV rather than smoking. The best treatment advice is always from the NCC, a National Comprehensive Cancer Network. I discussed this a lot on the other uh, videos. The guidelines from the NCCN as of 2016 recommend these patients get high-dose chemo radiation. So 70 gray or 7,000 rads of radiation combined with chemotherapy, either cisplatin or Herbitux. And they haven't recommended lowering the intensity of the treatment for HPV. And as I dictate this in September 2016, this is the current guideline. The typical radiation technique would look like this. This is a radiation field. It's including the tonsil and the lymph nodes in the neck, and we're trying to spare or avoid the parotid glands as best we can. This usually works quite well. Here's a typical patient within two or three weeks. The tonsil cancer is invisible or hard to see. Here's a typical PET scan showing after two or three months after radiation, the large yellow mass in the tonsil is totally gone. And again, the cure rates are much better with HPV positive patients and HPV negative. And in this study, adding chemo to radiation, particularly good local control rates and particularly good survival in the patients who are HPV positive or as noted here, P16. The staging system is uh, shown here. We're still using the AGACC 7th edition staging system. I discussed this on a lot of the other videos, but it's simply called the TNM system, T for tumor, based on the size of the tumor. T1, 2 centimeters, T2, 2 to 4 centimeters, T3, more than 4 centimeters, T4, invasive. The N part of TNM stands for the lymph nodes. A single lymph node three centimeters or about an inch is called N1. If the person has more than one node or they're larger than their N2 or N3. And the staging system as stage one, stage two was noted. The irony, any lymph node involvement at all and the patient is an automatic stage three. And if the patient has a large lymph node or more than one, they're automatic stage 4A. Most of the patients with HPV oral pharynx cancer are in stage 4A, and many of the patients find this uh, frightening because they assume stage 4 is always fatal or incurable. As noted on this table, though, patients with stage 4A cancer that are HPV positive still have an excellent cure rate 70, in the 70 to 80 percent range. And so here's another survival curve on these stages. HPV positive, even out to five years or so, the stage four patients had a 74% survival. If they're not HPV positive and it's caused by smoking, the five or six year survival for stage four drops all the way down to 30%, so it makes a huge difference. Another study, again, even stage 4A had an 81% five year survival. And only the patients had a, who had a very deeply invasive cancer or huge lymph nodes did poorly. There are other studies now on outcomes or survival with HPV that also mix in whether the patient is still a smoker or not. And these things are demonstrated here. If they're HPV positive, non-smoker, uh, they have a very good cure rate, 93% at the three years. If they were smokers, uh, but still early stage, they're in a low risk group. If they're smokers and have a more advanced stage, the cure rates drop down. If they're HPV negative and a smoker, the results are even worse. And all these tables are shown here. Similar studies will combine the stage with the smoking status. The best group would be a stage one, which would include T's up to T3, lymph nodes up to N2C. As long as the patient is not a smoker, 
they're still in the best group, group one, and have an excellent long-term survival. Another study on survival, again, talking about changing the lymph node status to the lymph node status that's used for nasopharynx cancer. Again, this gets complicated. Another staging system that's been uh, looked at recently, stage one would include patients who had N1 lymph nodes, and as noted here, they still have an 85 to 88 percent range. And stage two would include people who had N2 lymph nodes, so we're no longer calling them stage 4A, we're calling them stage 2, which makes sense because they have a 78 to 81 percent five-year survival. So it's likely the staging system for HPV will be changed around over the next few years or so. There are lots of side effects of radiation and chemo to the head and neck area, and I discuss this in more detail in some of the other videos. But short term, there's a lot of problems with dry mouth, change in taste, sore throat, trouble swallowing, some patients need a feeding tube. And there are a lot of long-term side effects from high-dose radiation and chemotherapy, but particularly problems with long-term dryness, problems with the teeth, even osteonecrosis of the jaw. And here's a typical patient that we would treat with high-dose chemo radiation. Large tonsil cancer is noted. By the last day of treatment, the cancer is totally invisible. But you can see how burnt and inflamed the patient's mouth or throat is. And so they're very uncomfortable. So there's a real desire to use less intensive therapy, particularly in the HPV patients. As I dictate this in September of 2016, there was a nice review that came out last month in the free online journal called Cancer Control. And they discuss de-escalation trials. These are trials with HPV where they're looking to see if they can lower the chemo uh, treatments. Perhaps instead of cisplatinum, use Herbitrux or Cetuximab, and perhaps lowering the dose of radiation. So one series of trials, again, switching the cisplatin with Cetuximab, still using high-dose radiation, 70 gray, Another group of studies is lowering the radiation dose from 70 gray down to 50 to 60 gray. Another series of trial giving induction chemotherapy means chemotherapy first, and then lower dose radiation in the range of 50 to 4 gray. Another approach is doing surgery first. There has been interest in what's called TORS, T-O-R-S, transoral robotic surgery, doing surgery and then using a lower dose of radiation 60 to 50 gray is noted here. But as of the summer of 2016, the NCCN guidelines do not recommend lowering the treatment for an HPV patient until some of these studies are completed. The other things worth noting, there is a projection of a lot larger number of oral pharynx cancer is noted over the next 20 years or so. Similarly, this is a projection of more oral pharynx but note, not oral cavity, larynx, or other throat cancers. So the punchline here is prevention. Kids should get vaccinated. The second point to remember is diagnosis. These are usually younger white males who present with a lump in the neck from the lymph nodes. And three, the treatments, there are very high cure rates for this cancer with modern chemoradiation. And hopefully in the near future, we use much less intensive therapy.